Hey guys, welcome to lesson 15 concept development video. This is our first lesson being quarantined at home for a week. So I hope you all stay healthy and stay safe. We are going to be doing the lessons exactly like we have been doing them virtually all week. Mrs. Elphis and I will probably also be offering some Zoom sessions if you want to just connect um, and say hi to us and if you need some extra support. So stay tuned for those as well. Today in our lesson, we're going to be working on dividing more. Um, this Today we're going to have some more opportunities to regroup throughout the number. So we're going to have to work on multiple regroupings, but it doesn't look like there's any remainders at the end of the problem. So we will we'll work on that on lesson 16. But today we're going to be practicing dividing using the standard algorithm method and our place value chart. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's practice some problems. So oops, let me clear the page so that we can get going. Let me find my example that I wanted to start with. Perfect. So we are going to start with 1.7 divided by 2. So our dividend is what we're dividing, which is 1.7. Our divisor is 2, and that's how many, the divisor is how many groups we're dividing it into. So I'm just going to erase my highlight so that that can get out of our way. Quickly make a place value chart. ones, tens, tenths, hundreds. Probably didn't even need all these places. But let's represent our dividend, one and seven tenths in our place value chart. I'm going to change color so it's easier to see. One and seven tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, it's so much nicer when we can organize our number disk in r rows of five um, so that we can easily look at it and see that that's seven. So let's give ourselves a little workspace. We're going to divide into two groups underneath this. So let's go ahead and give ourselves those two groups, one group, two group. And let's start in the largest place value when we're dividing because we can always decompose into smaller units and break them down so that we can work with those smaller units. So in the ones place, we have one, one, to distribute to two groups. We have one one to divide into two groups. Can we do it? Not as ones. So we're going to have to regroup those ones into tenths. And we know that that's going to give us ten more tenths. I don't have my stylus at home today. So I'm using my finger. Oh, actually I do. It's right on my badge. Whoops. So there's ten plus seven, so that's seventeen and we're dividing that by two. So just go ahead and distribute evenly back and forth until you get to 17. So that's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now knowing that we're dividing by two, I know that 17 was an odd number. So I knew that there was gonna be a remainder already. But there's no value in here, but we know that any time that we regroup and decompose into smaller units, it's for every one of those that we're regrouping, it's 10 smaller units. So now we have 10 hundredths and we're dividing by two. That's an even number, so we shouldn't have a remainder. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So our answer, our quotient, for 1 and 7 tenths divided by 2 is, well, there's 0 ones. Well, how many are equally in each group down here? Well, let's see. There is one, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 tenths and 5 hundredths. So the answer for 1.7 divided by 2 is 0 0.85. That's how we write it. How would you say it? It was 1 and 7 tenths divided by 2 equals 8,500. So that's really interesting. When we divide, we can actually have more place values represented in our quotient than was in our dividend. So what I mean by that is in our dividend, we had tenths showing. And over here in our answer, we have all the way to the hundreds. 
So when we regroup, we have to break it down and decompose into smaller units when there's a remainder. Okay, we'll keep that in mind as we keep practicing these problems. Let's do another one um, that is just tenths. 2.6 tenths divided by 4. And then after this, we'll just practice this with the place value chart again. And then on the next couple, we're going to practice the standard algorithm style with the uh, place value chart. And then we'll do a couple just with the standard algorithm. All right. So let's go ahead and set up our place value chart. This time I'm only going to go to hundreds. Let's see if we give ourselves enough space. I'll, I'll leave one space over for the thousands. All right, let me change color so we can see it a little easier. Let's represent our, our dividend inside of our place value chart. That's five, six, perfect. And then let's represent our divisor, which is how many groups we're dividing it into on our place value chart as well. Well, that was two, that's three. Let me just extend these lines with my place value chart. So that's one place, two, three, and four groups to divide into. Now that I have those groups ready, let's go ahead and divide. Well, the largest place value represented in this number is ones. There's two ones and four groups. Can we divide two into four groups? Can we distribute or pass out two to four different people? No. So both of those are going to be regrouped. So when I regroup and decompose into smaller units, each one of those ones is 10 tenths. So if there's two ones, we have 20 tenths. I'm just going to write 20 in here. 20 plus the 6 is 26. There's groups of four, so I'm trying to think in my brain, is 26 a multiple of four? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. So the answer is no, 26 is not a multiple of 12, or multiple of four. So that means there should be remainder. So let's go ahead and pass these out evenly until we get to 26. Five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and then 25, 26. That would be not equal. So these two would be remainders. So I'm just going to represent, I'm going to take them away and represent them up here by grabbing two of these and bringing them over. But we know that it's going to be 20 of these. This is why the number disk is so challenging, because it's hard to work with so many disks inside of these small areas. So we have 20 disks inside of our hundreds. Well, I know that 20 is a multiple of 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that when it's a multiple of the divisor, and in this case a multiple of 4, then that means that there is going to be no remainder. So when it's an exact multiple, lands on an exact multiple of the number we're dividing into, there's no remainder. So that's a good little thing to notice. Um, so how many are equally in each group? Well, there's six tenths and five hundredths, so that would be 0 0.65. So 2.6 divided by 4 equals 0 0.65. Or 2 and 6 tenths divided by 4 equals 65 hundredths. Once again, we started with tenths, but we had to regroup into smaller units so we could divide evenly. Great job. All right, this time we're going to do place value chart with our answer, and we're also going to do long division. So we're going to do both styles. 
Oh, sorry. And let me get my place value chart set up. Ones, tens, tens, hundreds, and thousands. And let's go ahead and let's practice a problem that's a little bit more challenging. Let's think about. Ooh, this was this will be a good problem to practice. Let's do seventeen divided. Whoops. Seventeen divided by four. Ooh, there's no. That's all a whole number. There's no parts to that number. There's no decimal and tenths, hundreds, and thousands. So we're just looking with one one, and or sorry, one ten and seven ones. And then over here on this side, we're going to put 17 because 17 is our dividend. It's going to go inside the den. Our divisor goes on the outside. So we're dividing 17 by 4. Let's finish setting up the place value chart over here. Oops, I ran right over with this. Let me get a little neater. And I need four spaces on my place value chart. Whoops, that was a bad dotted line, wasn't it? So now I have those four spots. Let me extend my place value chart. Let me just make sure I have four. Perfect. Four different spots. I don't need this one down here. Okay. So let's start with the place value chart and then we'll show the same steps over on the long division. These are the hardest ones, I think, for long division standard algorithm um, is when the first place value that you're trying to divide into doesn't work. So the largest place value in this number is tens. So we're looking to divide 110 into four groups. Well, can you evenly distribute one into four groups? Well, no, not without decomposing it. So we're going to go ahead and decompose this. Let me change colors. We're going to decompose this 110 as 10 1. So 10 plus 7 is 17. And now I can start distributing those out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I know if I do another group of four, that'll take me to 20. So that 17th one is a remainder. I need to regroup it. We now have 10 in the tenths place. And 10 is not a multiple of four. So let's just stop right there because I know there's going to be more remainders in the tenths. Let's show that first step over here on our standard algorithm. So... On our place value chart, we said that 110 cannot be divided into 4 1. So we represent that by showing, well, we actually can't do this. We cannot divide 1 into 4 groups. So we represent that with a 0. Well, when we did 0 into each of the 4 groups, we actually passed out 0 of them in the tens place. So we're still left over with that 110. And oh, that's exactly what happened in our place value chart. And then we decomposed it to the tenths or to the ones place, and we were left with 17 ones. Well, that's exactly what's showing on our standard algorithm side, too. Well, how many multiples of four did we decide that we could take out of 17 equally? Well, let's count by fours: four, eight, twelve, sixteen. 20. A 20 is too many, so it's 16. Well, that was four groups of four. So I'm going to put four groups of four up the top. When I put four groups of four, and I, we distributed it four into each of those four groups, I should say, we used 16 all together, which left us with one remaining one. All right, let me just move this up a little bit so I, oops, so I have some, some more space underneath. Okay, well, that's where we left off. Oh, actually, no, we didn't. We decomposed into a smaller unit. But there's no other digits over here. So what do I do? If the decimal was here, and we have to decompose in the tenths place, well, yeah, we just represent it with zero tenths. 
because look what happens when we decompose the tenths down. It becomes 10. Oh, 10 tenths. That's exactly what we were working with over in our place value chart. So let's go ahead and pass out 10 tenths. We know it's not a multiple of 4, 4, 8, 12. So there should be more remainders. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9 and 10 would be remainders. So that's two remainders. So that comes over to our hundreds. And that should be leaving us with 20 hundreds. Okay, let's show that over in our standard algorithm chart. So we said if we're dividing 10 into four groups, we can give each group equally two. So four groups of two, when we had four groups of two, we used eight all together, and we subtract to show our remainder. That left us with two remaining tenths. So if we had two remaining tenths, Well, we still need to divide, so we decompose again into the hundredths. On this one, we had to draw again, represent the hundredths with a zero. So as we can see, we are now dealing with 20 hundredths. Well, we know 20 is a multiple of 4, so this should be no remainders in this. How many multiples of 4? will get us 20. Well, that's 5, so we can put 5 equally in each group. Well, when we do 5 equally in each group of those 4, we use all 20 of them, and we're left with 0 remaining. Well, once we get to 0 down here, we can stop decomposing, right? Because there's nothing to decompose. Just like when we were... Oh, I never finished over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Sorry, didn't finish it. So we can see that the answer, remember our place value chart will show us by the equal numbers in each group. So there was four ones and two tenths and five hundredths. Now over on the standard algorithm, I didn't put the decimal up right away because I really wanted to make this a point. Our tens stayed over tens, our ones stayed over ones, our tenths over tenths, our hundreds over hundreds. I know it got a little squished at the bottom, but that also means that our decimal just stays right where it's at. And so you can see that our answers are exactly the same, 4.25 either, either method. So you're going to be choosing what method you prefer. This method on the right, the standard algorithm method, is the most efficient method. It's the method that I learned as a kid. It's the method your parents learned as a kid. This method helps you understand it. Understand what exactly the steps you're taking and the why behind it. It's slower, but it's less chances to make mistakes, except when you're doing all these number disks. So let's practice one more Actually, we'll just practice a couple more that without the place value chart now. So let's do a couple problems where we're just using standard algorithm. Whoops. So let's do 22 divided by 8. So 22 is our dividend. And we're dividing that into 8 equal groups. So this 8 is our divisor. So let's go ahead and put 22 in the den and then 8 on the outside. So we now are working with 22 divided by 8. Let me just rewrite this. Oh, Miss Briggs, come on. 22 divided by 8. Okay. Well, can we divide 2 into 8 groups? Well, no. We always have to have at least the same amount of the divisor in the place value or in the place to be able to put one in. So it would need to have eight in the tens place, right, right? To be able to at least divide it once. So we cannot divide two into eight groups. So we represent that. Let me just change color so my steps pop off the page. That will be zero times. Well, when I pass out zero into all eight groups, I've actually passed out no tens. 
so I represent that by saying minus 0. Well, that would leave us with two tens left over. Now I need to bring down my decompose it into the ones place. And that gives us 22 ones. Now I have to think about my multiples of 8. How many 8s, how many groups of 8 can we take out of 22 equally? And let's count my multiples of 8. 8, 16, 24. I hope you know that when I'm counting it by my multiples, I'm always using my fingers to count how many multiples I counted. So 8, there's 1. 16, that's 2. 24, that's 3. Well, 24 is too many. We don't have enough to pass out. So that means we've used two groups of eight. So I'm going to put two at the top. And when we use two groups of eight, we've equally passed out 16. Two times eight is 16, right? So how many are remaining? Well, you might need to regroup if you do. 12 minus six is six. One minus one is zero. So we're left with six ones. But we have to decompose them into smaller units. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself tenths by representing it with a zero. This time I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal right now in the answer because I know everything's lined up perfectly in standard algorithms. So now I'm working with 60. Ooh, that's a bigger number. So now we've got to think about multiples of 8 that go close to 60. So 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. We're at five groups of 8 right now. 5 times 8 is 40. 48, 56, oh, we're getting closer. And then 8 groups of 8 is 64. Well, 64 is too much. Let's back off one group. That would leave us with seven groups, or I should say seven in each of the eight groups. So when we have seven in equally in eight groups, that gives us 56. Let me just go ahead and squish this math problem. I'm running out of space today. So we are left with 56, and if we subtract that, we know that there should be four remaining tenths. Well, let's keep decomposing until we run out of values to give. So, or values to distribute. So now we're at 40 hundredths. Ooh, 40 is a multiple of 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. So we can put equally into each of those groups, five. And when we put five equally into each of those groups, we use all 40 and there's no remainder. So our answer, our quotient to 22 divided by eight is equal to 2.75 or two and 75 hundredths. All right, let's practice one more where we're just using standard algorithm. And then I'll meet you over at the um, problem set. So let's do, let's start with decimals this time. Instead of dividing into and decomposing all the way down into extra um, place values that weren't in the original dividend, let's try one, the dividend with 8,400. So we're going to divide this by 4. So nothing changes. We're still putting the dividend, the number we're dividing, inside the long division symbol. And then we're going to put our divisor on the outside. <coughs> And all these steps remain the same. The decimal is going to be exactly where it is. I could even put it there right now. And we also start always in the largest place value and work our way down because we can decompose into smaller units. Well, can you divide 0 into 4 equal groups? Well, no. We would at least need to see a 4 in the ones place to divide this first space. So we know that we cannot divide 0 into 4 groups. There's not enough to divide evenly. So when we pass out 4 equally, or 0 equally to all 4 groups, we've actually used 0. So we're going to show that by subtracting 0 here. 
That gave us zero remaining ones. But now we need to bring down our tenths. So now we've decomposed into the tenths place. Eight is a multiple of four. So there should be no remainders. Four, eight, yep, that's two equally in each of those four groups. And when I did two equally in those four groups, I did use all eight, so there's no remaining tenths. Now I can, whoops, bring it all the way down, bring all my hundreds down. So now I'm doing four divided by four. Well, four divided by four is going to be one. I can give every group one of those. And when I do one in each group, that uses all four, and we're left with a zero remainder. So zero and 84 hundredths, whoops, I'm not equal to, divided by four equals 0 0.21 or 21 hundredths. Great. I'll catch you guys at the, wow, this is a longer um, problem set. My apologies. I'm at home and I don't have my setup like I do at school. So good luck with this lesson. Practice. Do your best. And I'll see you at the problem.